correspondent alongside Diane King Hall. Same story in New York. Hello, team. Alphabet, the most important one, uh, just given the size, yeah. Diane. But boy, you could argue any of these uh, could be exciting just uh, because of the implications uh, that they uh, they have. Uh, Advanced Micro on whether or not the halo of uh, NVIDIA stretches as far as some will hope. And then yeah, Corvo, which gets 46% of its revenue from Apple. I mean, it's pretty much yeah. an Apple proxy. Yeah, it gives us an indication of how Apple could perform when we get those results. But I do think you're right that the heavy hitter today is going to be Alphabet. I mean, it kicks off this big week that we've been talking about leading into this, where we have five of these major players of the mega cap uh, out with results. And you think about last quarter and how they perform, and it was honestly a mixed bag. Uh, and you only have, when you think about the Mag 7 and, you know, kind of compare it to the broader market, the big two outperformers have been, of course, NVIDIA, as you just talked about, whether you're comparing it to AMD or the MAG-7, it has been the outperformer and Meta. The question will be when we start to get these results from Alphabet, Microsoft, et cetera, the whole group, will they catch up in terms of performance? And that depends. Absolutely. Meta is the one to catch right now, it seems like, when it comes to creativity on search. They're trying to embed everything into their uh, into their platforms. Alphabet numbers are out, and uh, the revenue at 65.85 billion is a slight beat versus the 65.5. Operating income is nice. Um, X TAC revenue is also pretty nice. Uh, traffic acquisition costs, when you take them out, the revenue comes to 74.55. Uh, for many analysts, that's their most important number for Alphabet. 72.88 was the estimate. Ho! Oh, here's another beat. Cloud, 11.35 versus 10.8. This stock has got to be moving, uh, and it is a little bit higher here. The uh, Some of the other stuff, I mean, even the stuff around the margin, the other bets beat the expectations for revenue. It seems pretty clean to me, KG. Anything dirty in here? No, uh, this, this looks like a pretty good report, especially when you're looking at the ad revenue. Obviously, the biggest focus uh, for a lot of analysts uh, for this name is the amount of ad, uh, you know, basically search share that they could actually lose in the market. It just appears that they're not losing much. And you're seeing a little bit more growth in the YouTube business, which has been meeting the street's expectations, but you haven't seen rapid growth in that area of the business as well. The other bets is going to be an interesting one. I don't have this, the breakdown there or the specifics, but uh, for that one to actually actually turn uh, and beat the street's expectations, I think is actually remarkable. Yeah, so quite about 10 million. Beats, Ad revenue beats. This is a good report overall. That the executive team has to land this, though. They do not do a great job with painting the narrative moving forward. Uh, and I think that's just the biggest risk for this name after this initial pop. Okay. Uh, so you're talking about the spin machine, if they can manage to convince the street they're still yeah. number one? Yeah. yeah uh, they, they, can they, I just add on oh, to yeah, that? Yeah. Go, mm -hmm. ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. I was just going to say, I think I, I agree with that point that KG made, especially when you think of the last earnings report. We saw a big swing to the downside, and part of that was what they talked about more about the uh, CapEx spend that they wanted to spend, the spending on AI, and they wanted to be over-invested versus under-invested because they saw that the long-term view was better to be more than less, and the street penalized them for that. So to KG's point, it will matter what they say on the earnings call off the back of these, but these are clean numbers and very good numbers you're seeing positive reaction in the after hours. Yeah, nice pop originally uh, here right out of the gate. Uh, those numbers, by the way, on the other bets, 388 million. Street was looking for 378. Uh, though I feel like Tesla's kind of gotten the other bets vibes lately with all their other stuff. But all right, bottom line is it looks pretty good here. You know, um, to your point about the commentary, KG, what would you want to hear from them? Do they need to really like uh, sell the Gemini uh, on the phones? Is that as big of a deal as it is for Apple? Do they need to say like, hey, Apple's rolling out their AI, but we already got it. We're going to be right there with them. I think specifics is actually going to be key. You know, uh, the last earnings announcement, when they had some questions from analysts, they were really abrupt when it came to that CapEx spend, right? Uh, yeah, we know that all of these companies are going to be ramping up their spending, but what are you spending it on? What's the further vision? Meta had the same type of issue, but Google seems like it's a little bit worse. They also kind of... Uh, 
bring out a very low bar uh, when it comes to their expectations on the macro. And I think that also could hurt them uh, in the after hours here. It's, it's a great report. It's really for the executive team to really lose uh, the gains that we've seen so far. That other bets uh, portion too, I believe that also includes Waymo if I'm not mistaken. And if it was able to actually exceed, uh, that's kind of that portion of that Tesla business that you want to kind of keep your eye out on. You know, there's always some chatter out there that they could potentially spin it off. Uh, into its own separate entity uh, to make it a little bit cleaner for their own balance sheet. So I think that type of uh, question or commentary on the call might also be very interesting when you're looking at the autonomous driving or the, the Tesla side of this, uh, the, the, this industry right now. They've also got a robotics uh, thing, too. Uh, um, intrinsic, I think they still own that. Um, so, yeah, I, that's kind of where I, I do like that kind of Tesla overlap. Good point about Waymo. Uh, all right, so if they tell us that they're still uh, king in the castle when it comes to search, the numbers seem to add up. The earnings also, the profitability beats the expectations, too. So if you want to last thought on Alphabet, we can, Diane, but it might be one to just kind of revisit on the call. Corvo's out, and it's getting dinged a little bit. Yeah, um, it, it, right. It, it's definitely one we'll want to revisit in terms of Alphabet, but it's uh, very solid in numbers, as we, we just mentioned. But you're right, Corvo just out. In terms of adjusted uh, EPS, they came in at a buck, uh, looks like a buck go for a share. Yeah. Uh, and dollar eighty eight. Sorry, sorry. I, I saw a different snap. Adjusted there. buck eighty eight. Yeah. Was, a, a buck eighty-eight, and then sales were one point oh four billion. So that was uh, about just a slight beat on uh, revenue. Uh, adjusted EPS does be expectation, but it is getting ding in the after hours right now. It looks like uh, in terms of the guidance, the guidance they're guiding for a range of between a buck ten to a buck thirty on revenue of eight hundred and seventy-five to nine hundred and twenty-five million. You you could kind of see some of this coming into this. Analysts had been souring a little bit on uh, Corvo uh, and concerns more about not the Apple side, but the Android side, because that is a big part of their equation as well. And they saw some, you know, kind of supply chain issues. So more analysts than not are in the hold camp when it comes to Corvo. I know Apple's been trying to uh, build its own supply chain of chips, but uh, I think a lot of the RF stuff uh, still comes from Corvo, but there's obviously uh, a lot of uh, pieces that go into uh, the iPhone puzzle. For Corvo, it still matters a lot. Like I said, like 40% of the revenue plus. So um, when the numbers come in ahead of the expectations on revenues, to me, that's kind of the Apple related part. The bottom line is like Corvo specific. Does that logic work for you, KG? Because it seems like the market doesn't like their profit outlook. But I would think the revenues is kind of more what implies something about Apple. And I don't think there's any problem really with the revenues. The revenue guide? Is the revenue Is guide missed too? Yeah, it missed. Uh, yeah, the street was looking for $1.05 billion. Uh, they guided between 875 million to 925 million for Q3. So that that was a miss there. So they missed both on the top and bottom line. They did oh, make, wow. uh, make some commentary too. Uh, they're seeing the market really kind of shift towards entry tier 5G phones rather than mid tier. So that shift in product mix is really what has impacted their business. Uh, and it looks like that's probably a, a, a lower margin type of business as well, which is uh, why you're probably seeing that guidance come up a little bit short here. I think this still kind of tells the story that the consumer market when it comes to handsets is still a little bit weak. Uh, I'm not sure if this is a direct read through into the Apple story, right? We'll get those earnings uh, in the next couple of days or what have you. But I think right now, uh, this is not the announcement you really want to see from this company that from a technical standpoint was really trying to hold that $100 level. And now you can actually probably see some pressure to the downside and filling some downside gaps. This is not a good report. Both top line and bottom line misses you know, exceptional miss on that bottom line uh, for, for the Q3 expectations here, Oliver. Mm -hmm. Rightfully so, you're going to see the stock uh, sell off here. Yeah, that's a good point. So exceptional miss on the bottom line might be Corvo, might be the particular handset stuff that you're talking about. The revenue, though, that's hard to excuse, right? That revenue miss, that could tell us something about uh, in demand uh, from the iPhone. It's hard to know specifically. We'll see what they say. So far, the commentary from the CFO just kind of says, look, we're guiding down. Uh, for the margins. So definitely going to get hit, and it is right now. Uh, but uh, Apple, let's see, Apple a little bit off. So I think the market is kind of trying to take a piece of information there from that. 
Apple closed to 233, dropped down to 232, but it kind of faded into the bell as well. So not terrible response right now. Uh, still, any piece of information uh, is going to be useful. So this one doesn't look great from Corvo. Uh, let's go somewhere reliable. Let's go to the credit card business of Visa where we just keep swiping, swiping. And as long as uh, we uh, keep shopping and keep our jobs, it's been pretty reliable. Seems like the uh, numbers are pretty good. Payments volume up 8%. Yeah. Street was looking for 7.5%. Plenty happening across borders up 13%. Uh, transactions, total process transactions, 61.5 billion, which is exactly at the estimate, which may not, uh, well, okay, it is leading to a pop, but it still is really impressive, 10% yeah. gain, Diane. Yeah, I mean, they look good uh, across the board, whether we're looking at the top or bottom line adjusted EPS, 271 a share, expectation 258, uh, revenue coming in at 9.6 billion also a beat well, the street was looking for about 9.5 billion on that number so they did better and then even as you mentioned payments volume that was one of the concerns coming into this analysts were concerned if there would be a deceleration uh in volume there they were concerned about that whether it comes to visa or mastercard uh and so you are seeing a pop in the after hours and visa certainly needed that because when you kind of when you compare it to its peer mastercard has been the outperformer former this year yeah that's a good point that they've both been solid but these has been a little bit behind uh, how uh, much do we need to look beyond just uh, the general macro employment stability and consumer sentiment confidence which are high kg how much on the margin for visa will change depending on some of the regulatory stuff and the way they can charge is there any like wild card element to these numbers I think the regulatory hurdles can hurt the stock, and that's really probably why it's down compared to uh, MasterCard here. So it's trying to regain some of those losses. Obviously, we do know that there uh, is going to be some regulatory issues for the company. Uh, but I think this really does align with the cross-border travel narrative that we've seen from American Express as well as from the airlines. So even if we have maybe a little bit of a slowdown here in the United States, I mean, they're an international, uh, international business. So if they continue to see maybe a rebound in the European markets or they continue to see travel uh, within the East Asia markets, they're going to be a beneficiary of that. And so, and so unless we see a global slowdown uh, as a whole, I think they're going to be fairly resilient. I think the biggest question is, what multiple do you want to pay for this name, uh, knowing that it has been able to really kind of outperform over the last year, year and a half? Uh, does it get a little bit expensive? And where do you see pockets of growth, knowing that the U.S. is is looking pretty robust right now compared to its peers? I'm not sure what that the, what the answer is there, but this is a pretty decent report. I think it's just going to be a little bit difficult trying to figure out what is the resolution for you know these allegations of, of cornering the market or, or keeping people out of the market. Are they going to have to pay a hefty fine or what have you? I, we just don't know that yet. Yeah. All right. So some uh, degree of unknown still lingering. Last one here before Advanced Micro comes out. Let's check in on Chipotle. Here's one I know, like the back of my hand. Yeah. I know what they do. Yeah. I just had the new brisket yesterday doesn't look like it's enough to get the stock uh, up in the yeah. afternoon despite operating margin of almost 17 percent street was only expecting 15 7 that seems like revenue yeah that yeah. seems like a huge number for margin so what happened Diane it looks like they missed on revenue. Revenue came in at 2.79 billion. Street was looking for more than 2.8 billion there. Uh, adjusted EPS was a beat, but that doesn't matter. I mean, I think one of the concerns is obviously what does you talk? We've talked about the consumer with different, you know, different companies, uh, but in particular within the eatery space. Uh, so it looks like Chipotle certainly lost some ground in its latest quarter. In terms of comps, comps did rise 6%. And again, although revenue increased, it wasn't enough to meet the level that the street was looking for. And when you think about the challenges that Chipotle already has with a you know, shift in leadership, they've got an interim CEO right now. He may ultimately become, become the next CEO, but that's unclear right now. You had the CFO have to put off his retirement because of that big shift at the top of the company. Okay. Uh, yeah, well said there. So they're going to have to see how they fare now kind of, uh, I, I would think Chipotle's smooth sailing, but there's obviously plenty of competition out there, and Cava kind of stole the market's attention as the restaurant trade. 
but that brisket does go for a higher price. And when the margins are moving up, I feel like that's pretty good. I do wonder, though, if the street maybe doesn't like their uh, new store openings 315 to 345 next year. She was looking closer to 360 on average, so your volume game is going to come in a little bit light. But I guess one could argue if you're doing better margins at the restaurants, and that's fine. Uh, give me a quick Chipotle thought, Mr. Green. Yeah, so comp store sales actually kind of missed the street's expectations. You know, Diane already talked about it, 6% on a year-over-year -year basis. Street mm -hmm. was looking for 6.3%. Uh, one thing to note, operating margins did increase. Restaurant level margins did decrease, though. So I think that's probably uh, another reason why you're starting mm. to see the, the the stock sell off just a tad bit. Now, are we nitpicking? Yes. Is the bar high? Yes. Uh, do they have some leadership challenges? Yes. It's still a good company. It's still operating better than any of its peers within this space. I think it's just taking a little bit of a breather here and, and trying to right size those comps. And maybe those analyst expectations can be uh, brought down a little bit in uh, the growth that we've seen over the last year and a half, two years. Uh, I don't want to say it's going to be completely a deceleration story, but maybe we have to get a little bit more uh, realistic when it comes to uh, their, their guidance and their expectations moving forward. All right. Well said. Good stuff.